What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Non Applicable Podcast presents Sports Talk. Sports. Hey, you know what? I made it through that intro without saying Sportscast. It helped you. I was over here with like the bouncing. Is ball. Is that what that was? Yeah. It helped. I was bouncing ball. Kind of like that time that we were at, at working at the camp and you were helping me frost that cake. Got done, didn't it? Yeah. Well, no help to you, sir. Yeah. Well, maybe you should try cutting the cake then. Uh, no, I'm bad at that. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, na.podcast919. Uh, I'm Chubbs. <laughs> One take. We're also on those sites. It'll Getting be on the screen. we hostile at each other because it's funny for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, share, and uh, subscribe. I almost said describe. That would just make no <laughs> yeah, sense don't do whatsoever. That. Um, Sponsor us. Send us money. For those of you that don't know, one take and I used to work for one summer in a, a kitchen at a camp. Well, we worked for more than one summer, but for and the story. We, yeah, we only did it the one summer. We worked collectively. We worked together collectively that one summer. Correcto. Uh, it was something that I had done like ten times. So, ten times. A lot of people would just hear us yelling from inside the kitchen, <laughs> and then when everybody would come in to get their meals, we would stand in the in the entryway, sort of just to greet and. Not necessarily agree because we didn't say people, but we had right. people we did talk to and be like, hey, what's up? People thought we were mean because we just stood there with our arms well, folded. Well, it didn't help that we were already in a hot kitchen in the middle of a summer in West Virginia for seven hours cooking, yeah. sweating, uncomfortable. Of course, we looked angry. We right. were ready to be but done. We weren't. And and a lot of the other employees are like, you should go talk to Chubbs and, and One Take. They're really, they're really cool guys. I'm like, they're scary. Yeah, it also didn't help that we were a lot larger than most of the people down there. It's true. Still am. Yeah. Still are. Uh, so anyway, this is our sports episode, as I said before, <laughs> when I called it Sports Talk. The Bears are getting too close to the cabin. That's okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> why, don't, why don't I remember? Oh, I remember that. That's <laughs> terrible. Yeah. Woo! That is not something we will share with no, any of you. people take it the wrong way. Um, so. Sports. I want to lead off this episode yeah, with a... Because by the time you guys hear it, it, really, it'll have passed a while. Uh, rest in peace to Chris uh, Chris Berman. Is that his name? Yeah, Chris Berman. His his wife. Hold your horses. He's still alive. His <laughs> wife died in a car crash uh, today, yesterday, uh, on on his birthday. So that sucks. But anyway, moving on. She's there Wednesday for uh, day wise because it's coming up Saturday. NBA playoffs are in full swing. We've had the the Cavs sweep the Raptors, which we said they would. Correct. We've had the Golden State, Golden swept, State Utah. swept right, which we said they would. Right. San Antonio won by three in overtime last night against uh, Houston to be up three games to two. The Celtics play game five tonight in Boston. Tied two games series. apiece. Yeah, it's tied at two. Um, hopefully the Celtics come to play this game because last game they started out better than they did the first two games, but then just yeah didn't play defense, didn't make shots. They didn't even look like they wanted to be there. I stopped watching. Yeah, I, I didn't really watch. It's one, it's one thing to lose because you get outplayed. It's another thing to lose because you're not putting in effort, and that's when I lose my patience. So winner of Celtics, Wizards plays Cleveland. Correct. Um. Celtics would have home court advantage being the number one seed. Correct. Don't think it's going to matter. Correct. <laughs> uh, and the winner of the San Antonio-Houston, probably going to be San Antonio. Will It's going to depend on if Houston can get their defense together. That's the only thing that's – I mean, San Antonio is a good team, but – really probably doesn't matter because we're looking at Golden State versus Cleveland in a rematch. I don't know. Do I even want to bring up the Draymond Green BS? Probably not. He's an idiot. <laughs> you said that weird. He's an idiot. Yeah, I wanted to put extra emphasis on it. <laughs> I say this Funny. because I, I honestly feel, I said this to Chubbs earlier today, is I feel like Draymond, Draymond Green says stuff and doesn't believe it or mean it. He just knows that it's going to keep him relevant and talked about, and that's what he wants. Because some of the stuff that comes out of his mouth, I'm like, there's no, like, you're an idiot. Yeah. Like, he said that Kelly Olin... Kelly Olenek. Olenek. It's because I see it in my head, even though I know how to say it, so once I see the Y, I think only. Limit. Kelly Olenek. <laughs> uh, that, 
we, we talked about it in the last one. He set a screen on Obre for Washington, and, and he t- and dude took offense to it, even though it wasn't even a hard screen. Right. Either way, I don't know how it came about. If a, a one of the news people or whatever you want to call those morons asked Draymond a question or something, but either way, he tried saying that Kelly Olynyk was a dirty player, and he doesn't respect those types of plays or those types of players. Apparently, fully forgetting that he has kicked three people in the groin. And his defense of that was not, I did not kick anyone in the groin. It was, you don't kick somebody with your shin. You kick somebody with your foot. Therefore, I didn't kick anyone ever. So, because he shinned them in the groin. Yeah. What an idiot. And two of them comes down to the person that he didn't kick in the groin were just so close that he couldn't get his foot to the spot to kick them in the groin. Therefore, he got he shinned them. But either way, like this, a shin him in the face. So he tries saying all that all that crap about um, Kelly Olynyk, which I'm an old school viewer and an old school player. Where there's a lot of things old. that you do that would be deemed fouls. Yes, old. <laughs> that would be deemed fouls nowadays. Right. Like little tactics that can be deemed cheap, but it's like even even when I played in in that that league down here. There was an older guy on, I, I call the teams on on the color of their shirts because I don't remember what they named themselves. The orange team that we played. Wasn't, I thought that that's what they were called anyway. Probably. There, there was an older guy, like he was in his late 40s on their team, and he played old school, and he was a guy that would run around screens and was a shooter. His way of getting separation is he would grab you, pull your arms down, and run the opposite way so it would stop your momentum. You do that to me, once you grab onto me, I grab onto you. If I'm not going nowhere, you're not going anywhere. Right. That's just how it is. So I say that to say that people still talk down about Kelly Olenek because he dislocated, separated Kevin Love's shoulder two years ago, his rookie year, whatever his rookie year was, because he grabbed onto his arm and pulled it down. And did he do it purposely? Grabbing him and pulling his arm, yes. Did he do it with the malicious intent of going, I want to pull his shoulder out? No. No. It's just Kevin Love wrapped his arm around him, so he's like, you're going to wrap your arm around my arm, I'm going to pull on it. Fair enough. It's just that stuff happens. Tit for tat. Exactly. Vis-a-vis. So, for somebody like (laughs) Draymond Green to say that is just ridiculous. And then they, uh, the sports whatever people, ask... Sports... I can't, I'm just having a hard time thinking of what they're called. The people that do the questioning and interviews. The interviewers? I guess, whatever. Sports writers. There Questioners. The sports writers, same one of the same ones or whatever, asked Isaiah Thomas what his thoughts were on what Draymond Green said. And he basically said, I had it, but I don't remember. He basically said that Draymond... He didn't say he was an idiot, but he said that it was basically false and a ridiculous statement to make. As Brad Stevens said, he said, I'm with this guy day in and day out, and he's far from dirty. Yeah. Um, Of course, any coach is really going to say that about any of their players, but... And I'm not saying this because I'm a Celtics fan. You know know me. You're a Celtics fan? I know, right? And people that do know me, if you've ever watched sports with me, you'll hear me call out my own favorite team for doing oh yeah me too bad stuff me too or illegal stuff like oh that was an illegal screen oh that was a travel like just because it's my team you doesn't mean you get to get away with it especially the cowboys doug free that's a hold oh every time i saw a whistle and we were on offense i'm like way to go free yeah nine times out of ten right but anyways they asked isaiah thomas about it he said it was ridiculous and then they asked draymond green what he thought about what isaiah thomas said and draymond said well maybe you should just worry about the series you're in instead of this so my thought is, Draymond was asked a question, gave a ridiculous answer, and his opinion. Then somebody else gave their opinion on his opinion, but he's shunning them for having an opinion on his opinion because they beat the big old mighty Utah Jazz and are done with their series. Another thing, Draymond is trying to say that he wishes that Cleveland had a harder path to go through in the Eastern Conference. So does that they Draymond won't be realize, as fresh as Golden State is when they meet up? Does Does Draymond realize that they beat the eight seeded Portland Trailblazers? Yeah. And they beat the Utah Jazz, five seed? 
who would have been technically a three or four seed in the East, yeah, uh, um, rank or win loss wise. You're making it sound like uh, you're going through San Antonio or Houston. Or going through San Antonio, then Houston, and Cleveland's going through the Bucks and then the Raptors. Right. I, my only thought is that he wants them to have a harder route so that they're more tired by the well, time. Well, that's probably what his thought, but his whole thing, what he was saying is that they just didn't have a, a hard, they're, they're not having a hard time. And if you think about it, <clears throat> excuse me, they are having a harder time of it because they're a lower seed. Technically. Even even though it's so just So technically one. they'd be playing a closer seeded team. Right. Yeah. No, Shut Draymond, up, Draymond. Draymond. I'm starting to believe that he's like a cousin to LeVar Ball. Let's get... That's, I'm just going to say that name unless you want to talk about it because I don't want to give... Who? Saying his, exactly. <laughs> ESPN's already doing too much of putting him on TV. And it... I mean, it... it, it, it He's achieving out of it what he wants. Publicity. Free publicity. Right. But it's not helping him sell his $495 shoe. And that's only if you want regular size. If you need a 14 or bigger, it's 700 Well, good thing I'm a 13. I'm an 11, but I wouldn't buy them anyway. So. Paid 145 bucks for a pair of Jordans once. I think I paid 190 one time for a pair of uh, Iversons. They lasted a a long the time. only reason I still don't have those Jordans is I let a friend borrow them and he had them in his house and his dog ate them. And that's after I had already had them for like two years. Those are some of my favorite shoes. Actually, three or four years. Yeah, I ended up wearing my, my Iversons. I was at, I worked at a restaurant dish, washing dishes. And I ended up, after having them for a couple of years, because I've had the same size shoe since seventh grade. Mine's fluctuated weirdly. Um, I, They got ruined after a while. But they were like... The most comfortable pair of shoes I've ever owned in my life. Yeah, those Jordan ones I had, like, I buy Jordans because I like them. I don't buy them because, oh, it's Jordans. I actually like the looks of the majority of them. I like the looks more than I like the comfort of I, them. That's what I was just going to say, but they're very uncomfortable, so I try yeah. not. I try to just buy, like, other Nikes that are kind of... I don't know how people do things in Jordans, like play basketball. Well, I, I, I put ins, insoles in all of mine. I have to because it's not even it for me. It's up by the where my toes bend. Oh, uh, for me, it's the bottom and, of your feet and on the sides. For me, it's the bottom of my feet. The my bottom of my heels end up burning because oh. there's not enough cushion. Yeah, no, mine's fine there. It's just it's where where it bends at the at the toe. I don't have wide feet, so that's probably my issue. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, um, idiots. Um, that's all for basketball. Red Sox need to get their stuff together. Dude, they had two games where they scored 17 in one game and 11 in the game before. Yeah, two games in a row. So they had 29 runs in two games, yet they have other games where they're just, like, struggling to get one. They lost to Milwaukee 11-7, to I think, last night. Jesus. Uh, I don't want to point out, but we should as of now. Especially for your mom since she's a Yankees fan. She's a closet Yankees fan. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good day. Uh, so it's funny now. I was annoyed at first. Well, my, my mom's not a Yankees fan. She left her Facebook on her computer, and I was on there, and I I hacked it, and I just wrote, "I'm a closet Yankees fan." Uh, so the Yankees have the best record as far not not most wins because there's like have, how do they have the best record? They're 21 and 11, and they're two 21 teams and that nine. Are, there's another team that's 20. I thought they were 21 and 11. 21 and 9. There's other teams that are 21 and 11. So right, they have so, the best record based on win percentage. All right, so here's my question, though. I saw a, a ranking of the top five teams. They were number two, and the number one team was 21 and 11. The it was number power three rankings. team was 21 and 11. It was, okay. It was just power rankings. All right. They have, they have, by win percentage as of recording today, Wednesday. on Wednesday, the best win percentage record in baseball. Yeah, so they're 21 and 9 and there's two teams that were 21 yeah. and 11. And the last like, I don't know, dozen plus times that through 30 games they had the best record, they went on to win the World Series. You know what that means? Boo. Good time for that streak to be broken. True. Uh but You know what's funny is obviously anyone that that watches sports, well, I shouldn't say anybody, a large majority of people, you have your favorite team and you don't like the rival rivalry team. Yeah. There are rivals. <laughs> so obviously for us Celtics, it's the Lakers as far as just the rivalry in conference. 
it can be interchangeable the last five to ten years. Yeah. Um, for the Bruins, Canadians? Yeah, the Canadians and the Rangers. Yeah, Canadians and the Rangers. Football for us, we're Cowboys fans, so it's the Everybody Giants. else. Yeah, everybody else, but <laughs> conference-wise. Giants, Eagles, Redskins. Is, yeah, those teams. Everybody. And then, obviously, in baseball, we're Red Sox fans, so it's the Yankees. Yankees. Out of all of those teams, the Lakers, I don't like because they're the Lakers. I will still watch them, and I still respect their organization. Philadelphia, in football, the only reason I don't like their team is because of their fan base. I have no issues with their players, for the most part. It's their fan base. They're idiots. The Giants, it's because it's a New York team, so it may. And I think Eli gets way too much praise. Yeah. Um, but at least they have something to show right. for their existence. I can existence. still have a, res- a respect for what they do and effort they put in. Same with the Redskins. Yeah. Um, in hockey, I can't say as much because I've hated the Canadians for a long time, but it's more of like I'm not rooting for them to fall, but I definitely don't care if they lose. Right. When it comes to baseball, I legitimately have zero respect for the Yankees organization. I don't give a rat's hiney if you've won four million World Series, I think you're crap. Your organization is crap. Steinbrenner was a DB. Yeah. The majority of your roster and players are follow suit. Yeah. I didn't like Girardi when he played. I like him even less as their manager. Perfect example, Buck Walters. He used to be their manager back in the day. Couldn't stand him. Now he's Baltimore's manager. Can't stand them or him because there... of Buck Walter. Okay. Because he is just... The stuff that comes out of his mouth is just so friggin' ridiculous. Yeah. Um, out of the... I mean, I'm old. Out of all the years I've been watching baseball, and as long as the Yankees have been around, I'm trying to think of original Yankees that I actually like. Mariana Ravana, Rivera. Jeez, I'm, It's because I'm hungry, and I was thinking of what I got in my fridge. And Marinara. And pasta sauce. <laughs> Um, Mariano Chicken Alfredo. Exactly. <laughs> I, I've always liked him yeah. because he's a guy that just went out, didn't talk, did his job, went home. And plus, he's a great guy off the field. Yeah. Does a lot for you know where he's from and people in general. Um, I be- if I remember correctly, Dave Winfield was originally a Yankee. Always liked Dave Winfield. Other than that, Usually, if there's a player that I did like and they go to the Yankees, I don't like them while they're on the Yankees. Perfect example, Swisher. Perfect example, Johnny Damon. Actually, I've never been a huge fan of Johnny Damon. He's weird. He, I, I liked him on the Sox. Johnny Damon, I liked him on the Sox because he was one of the catalysts for the idiots. Right. But there's just something about him that rubs me the wrong way, and I, I don't I don't like it. I was more okay with him going to the Yankees just because, because he, wasn't originally he wasn't originally a Red Sox. See, that's where it's okay, it's but the business. reason I don't is because he was a big part of the rivalry. Like, he got fought in fights, yeah, started fights. I agree. You know what I mean? So that's where I feel like... Pedro, he wasn't an original Red Sox. When he came over, he said that he would retire before going to the Yankees if they were the only team that offered him yeah. a job and he still had... That's why he went to the Mets. Right. He went to the Mets to go, ha-ha, stick it, Yankees. Yeah. If I can't stay with the team I want to be with... Ultimately, I'm going to go to a team that's going to piss you off. Right. Um, uh, Jacoby Ellsbury, I was mad when he went to the Yankees. Oh, it's still because he came through the system. Yeah. Yeah. Stupid. Same Uke, I wasn't as mad because, A, he didn't get to play much. Uh, he did and, go to the Yankees, yeah, didn't he? I wasn't as mad, even though he came through the, the, the farm system, because I feel like he did it because of the way the Red Sox treated him. Well, he initially just changed sock colors. Yeah, he went to Chicago. He went from Red Sox to White Sox. Yeah. Uh, see what well, I, I there? feel like he, I feel like he ended up going to the Yankees and be like, you know what, the Red Sox, you should have kept me. You didn't keep me. We could have worked it out. I wanted to. You were jerks. I'm going to piss yeah. you off and go to your... Because I don't feel like he wanted to be there. No. Yeah. No. Uh, so anyway, Yankees on a tear, unfortunately. Twenty one and nine as of Wednesday. This will be up Saturday, so they'll probably have three to four more games by then. Although did they played last night? I don't know. I'm just I, don't, gonna... I don't really don't pay attention. Like I'll see their record and whatnot, but once I see Yankee stuff I just keep going because I know it's gonna make me mad. Yeah, I'm just gonna double check uh real quick. If you wanna to think of what else. I mean the Yan- so the Yankees and the uh 
Yeah, they're twenty one and ten as of Oh, so they lost yesterday. Yeah. Three to five to three to the Reds. Um, oh wow, I gotta root for an Ohio team. They had like a what, eighteen inning game against the Cubs? Yeah, this other day. Yeah. Speaking of, uh there's been a lot of talks of possibly changing the extra innings rule in baseball. Really? Yeah. To, well, so kind of funny all the stuff you don't know about baseball and then this weird stuff you bring up I'm like what <laughs> so before before the invention or before the addition of lights at the stadiums games ended in ties occasionally right and they tried to start games earlier yeah uh so there's a thought of of having a cap of of like 12 innings if you need to go into extra just three extra ones and then if it ends it ends or some I think it was buster only Suggested that have a home run derby. Have um, every extra inning inning starts off with a runner on second. Yeah. Which I mean, I kind of like that because then you're more apt to get at least, even if it stays being tied, you're at least scoring runs and there's action in the game. See, this is where like I I I think that's a good idea, but then the part of me is feels like that's adding into the everyone gets a trophy. It's like, I didn't earn getting the second base, but because of these new rules, we just have somebody put on base. Yeah, so don't give them a stat. Don't give them the double as a stat. Don't well, even duh, put them in the... But, yeah, it's literally just... If they, if, they, if they score a run, don't give them credit for the run. Don't even give... Having a game end in a tie is always ridiculous to me. So, anything they can do to make it not end in a tie, I'm, I'm more so for... Right. It's sort of like in hockey. Regular season, you can end in a tie, but the playoffs, you can't. You just keep doing a shootout until somebody wins after Right. And it's like NFL. Regular season can end in a tie, but you can't in the playoffs or the Super Bowl. Well, I guess you could in the Super Bowl, but... Nah, they wouldn't. No. There's never been an overtime game in... Well, no, and I get the thought the process of the playoffs. Obviously, you need a winner to The advance. last one went to overtime, didn't it? Uh, I don't remember. Yes. No? Yeah. Yes. Why do I feel so... Ill prepared and dumb. Because we've already done a bunch of shows today. <laughs> what, um, this was Super Bowl 50. Oh, yeah, it's just Atlanta versus New England. I couldn't remember if they won in overtime or if they. Did they tie it and then went to overtime? I, I can see the, the, the play that won it in my head. I just don't remember when it happened. Yeah, it went in overtime. Yeah. The, so the, uh, in 51 attempts. One of them had gone into overtime. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, so the the idea of it even being a tie ever is just not well, even. Obviously, in the playoffs, you can't have a tie because you right. have to have a team advance. Yeah, Duh. but it part of me gets it in the regular season where it's just like, all right, it's something that we can calculate down the road if other, if ties are involved. Yeah, but. They don't happen enough, being, really. Being involved in a tie, well, I don't think that I have. I can't think of one. I can't. That's screw that. I'd rather lose or win. I kind of like your idea of the home run derby. You just take <laughs> you take your your best home run hitter. I they was get, just thinking that because in hockey they hockey they have the shootout after yeah, the time. They get ten you know, pitches. Overtime. Whoever hits the most home runs out of those ten, that but team make wins. Make the pitchers. Have the pitchers have to hit. Oh, that'd be terrible. <laughs> Nobody would ever win. I don't know. It's, like I said, that like having the guy in the second, that's a somewhat decent idea as far as then you stand a better chance of. So get it in and if somebody starts in second, but you also start with two outs. Yeah. Because I don't, somebody starting on second and you having three outs to try just seems right. like a gimme. Yeah, no, I you're agree. basically just going to make contact and put it, in a certain place. I agree. I have another idea, and I'd, I'd like to see it at an all-star game for baseball. Uh, and Because, seriously, who cares about the all-star game? And I'm still kind of annoyed that they ended up making it where the winner of the all-star game gets home field advantage. That defeats the purpose of you finishing they the season. This, they changed it last year. Did they? I think they changed it back. I no. could be wrong. Anybody listening, correct us. I'm pretty sure they changed that back. I haven't been able to pay attention to too So well. here's what I think they should do just to make it interesting for the all-star game. Anytime you end an inning with runners on the base, when you come back up to bat in the following inning – those runners are back on base. What if you do it like this? If it ends in a strikeout, they get to stay on base. 
But okay. if there's actually a hit that turns, like say you got a guy first on sec, first and second, they ground out, they get the guy any base, nobody's on base. But if you end an inning on a strikeout, swinging or looking, and there's a guy on base, they get to come back out on base. Okay. Or say you have runners on, on first and second, two outs, the grounders to third, tags the base, he's out. Then next inning, the guy that was on first is still on first. Because he wasn't the one that got out. Yeah. Like, literally something they could only do for the All-Star game. Right. Just A, because there'd be more runs, there'd yes. be more action. I'd be, I'd be okay with that. Just for the All-Star game. Obviously. And you have to start with your relief pitchers. The pitchers relieving themselves. <laughs> no, because, I mean, you have, you have your five starting pitchers in the All-Star game. Oh, it's just bad. You get to the point, the, the All-Star, I feel like every... Basketball and baseball, actually hockey can be too, but football doesn't even count because their all star thing is just a joke. It's boring. Wait, what? They have an all star game? I heard. <laughs> um, Sarcasm, people. But like basketball, they have all the stuff that leads up to it. Baseball, they have activities that lead up to right. it as well. And people like watching the all star game for the most part, but I don't want to watch an all star game that's, you know, a 2 2 game or. Whatever. Right. It's an all star game. I want. 15, 20 runs. Right. But then, see, that's... A lot of people argue with the with the Pro Bowl, which is NFL's All-Star game. I'm not an idiot. As there's no... And the same with the NBA All-Star game is that they don't play defense and that the scores are too ridiculous. Well, in basketball, they don't until about halfway through the third quarter. Then they start buckling down because yeah. they get competitive, opposed to football where they're just like... Oh, the just football, well, they're not allowed to play defense. Like, I don't even know why you even... They, that, just make it a flag football game. I was going to say that. Change that to the flag football one and just make it something that's fun for the fans. Have it do like tournament style where you've got enough players making it that you can pick. You can take four teams. What if, what if they do it on a smaller field, less guys? Do it almost like arena type football. I'd be okay with that. Have like two or three linemen on each side. Two I'd, wide receivers, three wide receivers. I'd be okay with that. Like shorten the field, use less players. I'd be okay with that. Yeah, it'd be kind of fun. Because, I mean, really, what does it matter when at the end of your career they're like, oh, well, you were an eight-time Pro Bowler. Who cares? A, it's a, a popularity contest, not a... Yeah. I'm not saying that skilled guys don't that right. deserve it don't get there. Plus, do. now, with the Pro Bowl being before the Super Bowl, players that are on the teams going to the Super Bowl don't even participate in the Pro Bowl. Yeah. So you can't really call yourself a Pro Bowler if you didn't play in it. They need to do a lot to change that. They need to bring back all the skills competitions that they used to do. They did this year. Did they bring back all of them? I don't know about all of them. They didn't televise it, though, did they? They did a lot of the QB stuff. It was on TV. Yeah. They didn't do a good job of publicizing it. Yeah, I miss the old days. They did, like, the fastest man challenge. They did the uh, horse with with field goal kickers. Um, The quarterback accuracy challenge. Yeah, they did the the QB challenge when I saw some of them. All that stuff. I just... No, that would be that, have that as your festivities leading up to a game that's going to be fun for the players and the fans. Yeah, I mean, get rid of the game altogether and just have those festivities. Yeah. Or turn do it, turn it into frisbee football. Do a um, rookies versus veterans game. Something it could be different, and allow them to actually play. Move it back to after the Super Bowl. That's what that's what I was saying. Do it as like the arena type thing, because then you can have less guys, and you don't got to worry about the defensive lines and offensive lines yeah. getting hurt because it's literally you're just hand blocking to keep the, the right. QB from getting blitz. Move it back to Hawaii. Move it to after the Super Bowl again. Yeah. We're like, come on! I don't understand how these people run these organizations and not into the ground. When I think that we have pretty pretty good ideas. Eh, eh. What do we know? Uh, so let's go. What else is going on in sports? Uh, you said the was it Canadians, Capitals beat the Rangers. No, the Senators beat Senators. the Rangers. Yeah. Um, had something to do with capitalism. <laughs> yeah, I've not been following. Like we said before, as hockey fans, when our team loses, yeah, that's even... one of the sports where I have no investment. I have no emotional investment in any team besides my own. Right. Um, I'm looking up the the Blue Jackets clinched. Yeah. 
saying that the NBA is looking into Isaiah Thomas because he had an incident, which basically was just a yelling incident with a fan in Washington. I remember the whole thing. I mean, fans can be obnoxious, and usually players do a good job of just laughing and ignoring it, but sometimes it gets too much, and you say stuff. So he basically told the uh, fan that he'd beat his arse. Just pretty sure that's all that happened with that. I don't remember. This is, uh, that's confusing. You're um, You are. So if you go to NHL.com and do the Stanley Cup playoffs, it brings up this bracket challenge where it's just not correct. <laughs> it's just, like, it shows the Rangers playing the Rangers. So they're going to win? Apparently. Um, as much as I don't like ESPN, I use the ESPN.com for all that crap because it's easier. Yeah. I apologize to our listeners. And unfortunately, I don't really have any. I'm trying to think in my head what else has been going on that was noteworthy. But most of it's just complaining about uh, idiots that are getting too much TV time that deserve none. None. I got one. I can't find it. Who cares? You guys, you guys can look it up. Yeah. It's hockey. We don't care. What you got? Um, Cowboys preseason or power ranked is five. And that's after draft considerations. I'll... I feel like that's mostly due to their offense. Yes. That's all due to their offense because they lost um, a lot of defense. They were four last year, I guess. Okay. I think. If I read the thing correctly, it said they were one worse this year, but it could have been vice versa. Fourth at the end of the season? Maybe. Because there's no way that yeah, they at were... the beginning of the season, I don't... Well, actually, know you know, that were. would... No, yeah, because they were... The year before, were 4-12, and 12, so there's yeah. no way that they would have made them fourth. Yeah. Especially with Romo going out and people not knowing how... So, yeah, because yeah, the end of the season... Re- yeah, end of the season last year, them being four power ranking sounds about right. So, you lose Ronald Leary, Doug Free... Barry Church, J.J. Wilcox, Jack Mo. Crawford, Mo. Morris Claiborne, uh, Carr, Brandon Carr, and you only drop down one? Apparently. Is that how little the voters thought of those players? Other than that, or they think that... Because aside from Church and Leary, I completely agree. Other than that, or they, they really think that what they did for drafting addressed a lot of their their issues or they're really thinking that the overall offense is going to be a lot better because you have Zeke and Dak have a full year of experience under their belts right which I think is going to benefit you have Lil Collins coming back I feel like Zeke's going to show off more consistently because he got off to a slow start last year yeah he was he he wasn't letting the plays progress he was just like go yeah and then they were like, bro, slow it down. you got to right. wait for it's the like, play. like, oh, I have ball. to run this through the A gap. Let me go. But the B gap's wide open. And he yeah, wasn't. or it was I need to get to the B gap, but the play hasn't evolved there yet. I'm already at the B gap. Why am I tackled? Yeah. Yeah, so we got to the point where we had to slow down and wait for the play to advance. It only took him like two games to figure it out. He's not an idiot. I mean, he sounds like it when he talks, but. No, he well, didn't. he doesn't sound like an idiot. He's just, he reminds me, of, he's he's B when he talks. But, um, uh. Uh, but um, I'd rather listen to him talk than either Buddy Heald or... Dude, uh, Buddy Heald makes me... Tim Tebow. Tebow's just annoying. Um, dude, so he's still playing AAA or yeah. whatever, wherever he's at, but he just signed an extension with the SEC Network. Okay. How's that work? I feel like that's... You His... technically get paid for minor league baseball, don't you? Yeah. It's not much. Does the but... season end sooner than regular season? Or regular um, uh, the major leagues? I don't think so. Aren't they still active during the... Yeah, they're still... I th- they may end earlier, but is, they're not done now. No, I know they're not done now. But college football hasn't started up yet either. That's... Yeah, but he, he was still under contract and did an extension. Yeah. That's the way I read it. I'm just thinking of it as he, he'll be able to do... Because the baseball season's over. Right. And it's not like the Mets are going to be in the playoffs and call him up. 
Right. I was going to I was going to say it's kind of a conflict of interest, but it really isn't. I mean, Brandon Marshall was on the NFL Network during the season. so Yeah, and you, like, Bo Jackson and Deion Sanders both played football and baseball. Well, yeah, I was just thinking as far as being an actual athlete and then being on the other end mm. reporting it. Yeah. I don't know. Um, like we said last week, it's kind of a like really weird period for... Sports. Yeah, we're in a lull right now because baseball is not. I mean, there's not too too much going on. I no. mean, obviously we're 30 games into the 162 game of season, so yeah, uh, teams we'll, are still feeling out their season. We'll really probably get into more baseball after the All Star break. Yeah. It's supposed to be there's. I think there's a timetable for uh, Price coming back for the Red Sox. Okay, maybe, maybe that's, soon. It's positive. Um, sales had last I checked in garage. He had, like, 53 strikeouts already. Sale is good. Yeah. He's, like, when when the Red Sox signed Price, especially for the Price, I was like, ugh. I like him, but. Yeah, because it's like, we'll spend whatever we need to on pitchers, but we're going to let David Lester, uh, John Lester go, yeah. and we'll get David Price. At the same price tag, essentially. Yeah. I felt like that was a bad Lester move. has proven that he's still got it. Yeah. But, yeah, so when they got price, I was just like, uh, I like him, but he's not proven in the playoffs. No. And going from Tampa, who's somewhere before he came to the Red Sox? No. Either way, we've said before, going to certain teams and so- certain sports or certain organizations, certainly. Certain. For certain. That... You have good players that go to, and then they just bomb because they right. can't and handle the pressure. And the Red Sox is one of those. Teams. If I remember correctly, he never really fared too well against the Red Sox. Hit or miss, no pun intended for the it sport. Was the same as uh, when they brought over John Lackey, and over the, like the previous. I still say he needed to pitch with his jaw. Previous couple of seasons when he was with the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, the Red Sox had their number Oakland, in California. the playoffs. Yeah. I don't, and that I, I just I felt it was really dumb bringing him over, and I was right, but whatever. The thing that sucked with him it was almost the same as um, Beckett, uh, Buckles. Oh, is that he'd have an outing where you're like, all right, he's getting it together. Then the next time you'd be like, have you ever thrown a baseball before? Yeah. Why don't you just underhand it to him? Well, yeah, Clay. I feel bad for Clay because he had his debut game in the majors was a one hitter. Yeah. And then is the next one, he almost had a no hit, or he did have a no hitter, something like that. Like he peaked immediately and then fell off. Yeah, he he had weird, like ticky tack injuries. Yeah, and then he was just very very inconsistent. He was basically the guy where you knew it was going to be every other game. Like he'd have if he had one game that was good, you knew the next one was going to be awful. Right. And nine times out of ten, it was. Yeah. But either way, as I was saying, when they got sale. I was. It wasn't the same as Price. I was like, nice. That'll help. Find it and funny so, that their names. Huh? Price and Sale. <laughs> I ain't thinking that's all right now. So <laughs> we need a guy named Bargain. Right. As long as we don't get a guy named Blewett. Half off. <laughs> so, but um, hopefully next week we'll have more sports stuff. Yeah. Like we said, it's it's really. We've been trying to add more stuff, and I feel like we put more energy into the other stuff in this. Sports one kind of went to the side because there's not too much going on. It's all right. Once NFL season gets closer, we'll do. Uh, I know you don't like to do them, so I'll probably do them. Predictions. Um, it's not that I don't like to do them. It's that you're basically going off from hearsay. I guess you could say you're going based off from last year and not seeing anything. Right. It's just I. I don't know. It's fun for me. No, I, I no, I get why people and I listen to a bunch of them, but it's just for me. I don't. I I'll do it, but it'll be with a I have no no like confidence in my predictions going forward from there. Right. It's like I'm literally doing it based off what I'd prefer happen. Yeah. And I, like I won't say we'll do predictions of overall win-loss record for every team cuz it's I feel like a lot of people do that, but then they don't do the math and look at the schedules, so they end up having it 
where it's just mathematically impossible for them to be 100 percent right right uh even if they could be there's too many invariables so we'll just i will probably go um division winners like division winners and wild card and give what we think their records will be we'll figure it out i mean there's no sense in saying you know browns one and 15 no they're going all the way this year two and 14 this year I'm so mad that Peppers is there. Yeah. Oh, well. So, check us out. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, na.podcast919. Uh, <laughs> Chubbs and One Taker there. Also, <laughs> like, share, and subscribe. Deuces. Double deuces. <laughs>